That's a nice fish on the bottom fly, which is the big brown stone. That wasn't bad, first cast, and it's a good rainbow. Real nice. Now this is a two-weight rod, this is probably a 20-inch fish, so he's going to test me a little. Hey guys, Aaron Mike here with Lively Legs Fly Fishing, and uh, today I'm going to do a little bit different uh, style of video. I'm certainly going to fish, because I can't come out and not, not try to catch some, but Anyhow, we get a ton of questions asked on what style of nymphing do you guys prefer? And to really answer that, I mean, there's so many different ones, but to answer that, it's whatever you are comfortable with and whatever you think is best suited for you. Now, I'm going to go over some of the different types of nymph fishing that there are and, you know, try to explain a little bit of the, the differences and hopefully maybe help you understand because, you know, you hear it called... Um, tight line nymphing, high sticking, ches nymphing, uh, suspension nymphing. So what does all this mean? And you know, what style suits you best is basically what we're going to go over in your options. So uh, the first option up is you hear a lot, especially recently, about the monofilament. Uh, the, you know, you, you take a bunch of monofilament and substitute for a fly line and you put that on your, your spool, and it, it's a great way. I mean, it takes a little bit to get used to the casting, but I found, and I have been using, and I absolutely love it, uh, a line called OPST, which is a laser line. And it looks something like this. This is in a pink, this is in a green. And I figured out that 25, the 30 pound, I actually like the 30 pound test uh, just for casting ability. But this monofilament, when you compare it to other monofilaments, is the epitome of monofilament fishing in my opinion. It's super slick, it runs through the guides, it has very low memory. Now when I say low memory, when you take it off your spool, you have to take your hand and, and run it through. And I, I did that the first time of using it. And I, I usually just run, you know, the first 10 or 12 feet through uh, each time. And, and, and then you have a nice straight line for the rest of the day. So the benefits of this are sensitivity, by far. It is the most, 100%, most sensitive way to feel those subtle takes and realize when you have a strike. And one other thing I really like about the OPST, or, you know, you probably get away with it with other mono, but... I've tried Maxima and I've tried other things and I just didn't like them. Uh, this is high vis so you miss no strikes. You actually feel the strikes. You know when you're bait fishing you feel that dit, dit, dit. It's almost exactly what it's like. Now a lot of people might be opposed to that but if you want to go out and catch fish this is certainly the way to do it. But on the rig, so I spool, uh, you know I put the whole spool on, I can't remember how many. It's 164 feet. And uh, yeah, they're both 164. I have, I have a spool 25 and I have a spool 30. So you put the whole spool on your on your rig, and then then it's simple. At the end of that spool, you just take a piece of cider to your desired length. I have mine about three feet. Okay, so you're totally eliminating any fly line. Then at the end of the OPST, or I'm sorry, at the end of the OPST, yes, you put your piece of cider. Uh, I use a bicolored cider. Then at the end of that three foot piece of cider you attach a tippet ring. And then each time you go out, you take uh, your tippet, whatever, your four or five X, you take about three and a half, four feet, attach your first fly. Uh, if you want to do dropper style, whatever you choose, I run uh, both through the, the top flies I most of the time. And, and th that's basically it. So each time you go out, it's a very simple setup and extremely effective. So um, here it is again. It's the OPST laser line, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch, well, I say I am, I'm going to try to catch a fish on the OPST, then I'm going to go to our nymphing line, which I'm going to explain here in a minute, um, but let me see if I can get my pole under these trees. Here I have the, the pink on, and like I said, I can't show you my, my entire rig, but uh, you know, I have my tippet to my cider to the tippet, uh, I'm sorry, my tippet to my indicator line, which has a tippet ring attached to the end, then blood knotted straight to the OPST. Um, so hopefully you'll get to see that and, 
it, it's super sensitive. So that's a little bit about the OPST and hope to uh, you know catch a fish on it and show you, um, hoping you can pick it up in the video, you know, the, the subtle takes or if they slam it, you'll definitely see it. But uh, hope the video camera picks it up. So that's a little bit about the OPST and it's certainly something, if you're looking for great sensitivity, give it a try. Okay, so the second line that we're going to move on to is, you know, another rig that I absolutely love. And, whoop, let me just put this back up here. And it is our Hannock Competition um, Thin Diameter Ches Nymph. Uh, that's what it says in a box, but you can say whatever type style of nymphing you want. It's basically a thin fly line and it's ultra easy to cast and it has cold weather technology which I really like about it so it does not become stiff you know on those cold winter days I do a lot of fishing and uh, it's a great line and I like it opposed to the traditional fly line due to the thinness or the diameter of this line and when I rig this up you know you obviously put the, the whole spool on your reel you go to the end it has a nice little loop and I like to just basically, well, I do, attach one of the five foot indicator lines off of this um, style of line. Then you have from your fly line loop, you will have a five foot leader to a tippet ring. And off that tippet ring, I just put like two or three, I'm sorry, three or four, shouldn't have said two, that's very short, uh, feed a tippet to my first fly, drop 15 or 16 inches to my, to my second fly. But I would rate this the, the second most sensitive way to detect strikes when you're out on the stream. Now, one benefit to this over the, the laser line or the monofilament, in my experience, is if you're out and a hatch comes off, you can certainly switch over to dries with this. Now, is it going to lay, lay out like your traditional fly line? Absolutely not. Will it lay out the, to the point you can catch fish? Certainly. I've done it many times. And a lot of times, if you want to just avoid that, it's simple to carry a spare spool if you have one, or just take a reel that has your uh, traditional fly line. But this, if you're, you, you know, you want to go out and you're, you're ready for anything, um, whether you're nymphing or, or a hatch comes off and dries, this is a great, great line, very sensitive. And to me, it doesn't feel like I'm holding weed eater cord. So, because when I cast up in that run, I'm, when I cast, I'm actually leading my flies and I'm pulling with on this line with my left hand to keep that tight keep that tight keep that tight keep that tight and you you'll see the strikes much better this line does not have that big belly where your traditional five, four and five weight lines do it just doesn't have the mass of those fly lines so naturally the thinner diameter is going to be more sensitive and put you in more contact with your flies so that's a little bit about the hint uh, the Hannock uh, Ches nymphing line and all of these are available on our website so next up we're going to go over the the uh you know just the traditional fly line and there's certainly some advantages to that too so stay tuned all right the last type of line that i'm going to talk about just your traditional weight forward floating line um it's a little bit thicker in in diameter so you know me anymore i'm into that that thinner stuff more sensitivity but if you're out, you can certainly, 100%, I've done it for 10 years, fish, traditional fly line, slam fish, and everything. Um, but some of the advantages over this, and they're very important, are, number one, if you indicator fish, there is no better line to load that indicator and your rig than a tr traditional fly line. This ARC-99 um, is a little bit thinner than your traditional fly lines. And certainly, if a hatch comes off, you're, you're, you're set. I mean, you can, you can zip this out there 50 feet if you want, uh, if you can cast the standard dry. So, I mean, you can certainly go out and carry one reel and be absolutely prepared for everything with this, this type of line. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down to the stream and I'm going to try to catch a fish on the, the OPST. I'm going to try to catch one on our nymphing line and I'm going to try to ca catch one on our, um, you know, traditional ARC 99 fly line and you can see the difference when I'm casting, how, the, how they cast, uh, you know, I, I really don't have a problem casting any of them. Um, the hardest one to get used to will certainly be that mono rig or the OPST, but I will tell you what, this OPST casts way better than any other mono that I have tried. I cast it just as accurate and just 
just as far as you know the Hanek, the, the, the thin diameter nymphing line. So let me get geared up. I'll start off with the OPST and we'll head to the to the stream. Okay, just got down to the stream. Um, so we talked about the different styles of lines, types of lines earlier. Um, I'm gonna start off with the OPST. And this is the 25 pound. Um, I actually like the 30 better. Um, actually, you know, I shouldn't say that. They both cast nice. But I'm gonna give you a look, if I can, without getting tangled up here. So here's the end of my OPST laser running line. Blood knotted to a piece of cider, probably three feet. To a tippet ring. Off that tippet ring, I'm dropping my 4x tippet today, and I have the golden double treble. And between the golden double treble and my bottom fly, which I'm using a big brown HD stone, I have I don't know 14 inches, and I do have a little bit of weight in between. Um, if I'm using two very heavy tungsten nymphs, I try to eliminate that weight, um, but I, ha I have it on for the purpose of today. So. Let me wait out, and I hope you can pick up my easement of casting. I mean, you can see I could just flick that out, and it went, didn't even really, really do much. Just threw it way out into the stream. So, this OPST laser line is way easier to cast than your traditional mono. So, let's wait out and see if we can't get a fish on it. One thing I wanted to point out, and I gotta hold the rod this way, there's some trees around here, is when I cast, so when I cast that upstream, you're gonna see me peeling that line and peeling that line and keeping it tight as it comes down through. So my left hand is just as important in that, uh, that right hand. I'm keeping that line tight and I'm peeling it down, peeling it down, keeping that line tight, leading with my rod tip. Let me see it this way. So I'm basically peeling that line, peeling that line, peeling that line, keeping it tight the whole way down the, the stream until I see that indicator line twitch or a lot of times with this OPSD, you'll feel it. Um, just like those little trout nibbles, but you got to get them the first time. So let's see if we can do this. Feel that line, feel that line, tight, tight, tight. There it goes. And that, that's a nice fish on the bottom fly, which is the big brown stone. That wasn't bad, first cast. And it's a good rainbow. Real nice. Now this is a two weight rod. This is probably a 20 inch fish. So he's going to test me a little. No, no, I'm going to put it to him. fits in the net. Whoa! Almost got out of the net. So I'm just going to give you a quick look at them because I want to get them back in. This is a football. I'm going to get them in the water real quick. Let's come up here. And look at the size of that trout. Right there. Oh, must have fell out. But he took that big brown, brown stone. So I'm going to get him in my net. And, oh no, the brownstone's still in there. See it right in his mouth. Okay, make sure we're recording, yep, yep. All right, so I just released that one with the, the OPST laser line, and Benny's gonna kill me because I forgot to uh, film the release. I'll be sure to get him on the rest of them. But uh, before I talk about this setup, I wanna show you something. We just got these, and they, there's a tree up there, but they balance so nice, and they're the new uh, Hannock uh, Chesnimp reels. Um, Super nice, and this is a 3-4, and it fits perfect on these uh, the syndicates, both the two and the three, it balances so nice. But the line I'm, that's on this right now, let me get it untangled, is the Hannock nymphing line. And you can see the thin diameter on it, and simple, easy to cast, but let me just go over the, the setup real quick, because that's often you know a question we get asked about. So I'm gonna lay this down, let me grab it here. And you can see right here is the end of that indicator line. I have one of the five foot gold leaders on and it goes down to 
a piece of the indicator line. You probably can't tell how long it is, but it's about three feet. And then I have my tippet ring. Follow the tippet ring down. Uh, probably, I don't know, three and a half foot of tippet to my first fly, and that's the little uh, red warrior out of our jig fly series. And here's how far apart they are, probably 15, 16 inches. I do have a piece of shot in between because I'm going to try a Y2K on. And that's the big, the big Shrive's favorite color. So let's see if we can't get one on there for him. So, and same, same thing, I'm going to cast to the head of the run, and I'm going to use this left hand to peel that line down and keep it tight the whole way coming down through. And, uh, you know, you'll see the indicator twitch, pause, move, make it awkward, jolt. Or a lot of times you'll feel it when they hammer it. So let's see if we can't catch one on this setup. I hope you can see it on the video, just a tiny pause in that indicator run. Took the big shy one you could. Adam. Uh, he took the big shrives y 2 k -er. Can't even grab these fish, they're so nice. I don't want to drop them. There he is. You can see that Y2K in his mouth. So I'm going to get him unhooked. I'll make sure I get the, the release on here. Um, let me, I'll just pause it. Alright, I snapped a photo of that guy. I want to hurry up get him back in. Get the release for you, Benny. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if you're going to be able to see that in the video. Um, after I catch one on the, what's last, the traditional fly line, I might set up where I get a camera angle down so you can see exactly what I'm doing a little better. But I'm going to leave it here so I have the same setup for each of the three, three types of line. But let me change over again. I'm going to get that traditional fly line hooked up and see if we can't get another. Okay, last setup here, and it's just the ARC-99. A uh, little thicker than the, um, you know, the indicator nymphing line, but it's the exact same setup. I'm not going to go over it. To the end of the fly line, I have my five-foot gold leader down to the cider line, to a tippet ring, then I have my, my tippet to my first and second fly, and I'm going to be using a little wiggly there. <laughs> Rusty Double Trouble and the big uh, the HD Stone Brown. So see if you can't get another fish. And that will probably pretty much wrap up the video. I only have, yeah, there's one more bar showing on a battery, but I might set up a camera angle, and I don't know if I'll catch one or not, but just so you can see, when I'm leaning it down through, what my left hand is doing, because I think that's probably the most important factor in catching fish, is keeping that line tight and staying in contact with your flies. So, uh, let's see if we can't get another.
doesn't take long at all. Okay. We even hit the top five. Rusty double trouble, I believe. Not a very big day, but a There he is, a little smaller than the, the other two, but you can see that rusty double trouble right there. And I'm just gonna pop that out real quick. Pops right out. And I'm gonna take him out and release him. And there you go. So I hope on today's video you learned something. And as always, you know, it's a learning game for me as well. And I certainly don't know everything, um, but I work at it. I try my best, and that's that's what you got to do. So um, I hope you learned the difference between the mono rig, uh, you know, your your uh, your nymphing line, and your traditional fly line. So what I think I'm going to try to do is put a little bonus footage here, and I'll just keep this same rig on. But I'm going to set the camera up on the other side of the stream so you can see that left hand. What I mean about keeping up with your line, and whether I catch one or not. Um, Still throw it in there just so you can see but I hope to catch one so stay tuned okay so I caught a fish on each of the, the three styles of line that we discussed and I hope you learned something but I just want to come and I want to focus more on you know what my left hand is doing as I'm coming down through the run you probably so I'm focusing more on me than if I catch a fish this time and I don't know if I will I wait out into the hole put my camera on the other side so but at least you'll get to see you know what I'm doing as that line's coming down through so as soon as I cast at the head I'm going to get that line tight and keep peeling it with my left hand, keeping it tight as it comes out through the run. Now, it's harder to do in faster water. Uh, I mean, it's pretty fast. It's flowing pretty good today, so, and it's freezing, so. Uh, let's see if we can't get one last fish. the head of the run, grab it with my left, and I'm peeling down, peeling, peeling, as it's coming down through, keeping that line tight, keeping that line tight, coming down through, peeling, just lean the flies, now I'm not pulling them, there's a big difference, one more and then I might adjust the camera angle up a little bit, peeling with my left, Watching that indicator, keeping it tight, bringing it down through. Feeling. Feeling. I'm going to turn this camera just to pause. I really waded down into the hole here and probably ruined a run. Let me go just a little bit that way. Get a view of the screen. Try that. see you know with my left hand the way I was holding that uh, holding that line caught up from here. Nice fish too. The light you can. Alright, I hope you learned something today, and like I said, I'm not, not a professional myself, so 
Um, there he is, Y2K right in the corner of the mouth. I hope what I really wanted you to learn was the difference, uh, you know, your, your options, I should say. And there's no right, there's no right or wrong option. It's certainly whatever you are comfortable with. But uh, to wrap this up and give a little conclusion, the OPST is certainly the most sensitive. Um, your, your, your nymphing line is probably the second most sensitive. Easier to cast, but you can certainly cast dries with that. And, and lastly, you know, your traditional weight forward, four or five weight line is a great all-purpose line. It's a great if you indicator fish. So all of these products that I went over today are available on our website. And if you look for something really cool to <laughs> try, um, try that OPST. It's, uh, I mean, it lasts a long time and it's, it's a lot cheaper than fly line. And, uh, you know, if the top eight or 10 feet start to wear out, you don't have to buy new stuff. Peel it off, snip it off, and re redo the rig. So I hope you enjoyed today and uh, thanks, for, thanks for tuning in and watching.